Today, we're gonna start welding together a little six foot micro jet boat. Now, every self-respecting YouTube channel that does anything with boats or cars has at least one micro jet boat in their lineup. There's guys like Blake Wilkie and Cletus McFarland and his buddies, and then the Grindhard Plumbing Company boys. They built a little six foot micro jet boat, wrapped it pink. You might've seen it on YouTube, Jumping Rivers. Now, these are the titans of YouTube, and if you've made it to this video here at Motivate Labs, it means you're on the outskirts of the algorithm, and it also means we're gonna build this thing and it's gonna be worse in almost every way. So there's three reasons we wanna build this little micro jet boat. One, it'll just be fun to ride around on the lake, of course. Two, it'll be good practice for welding aluminum, especially since the houseboat's gonna need so much of it when we do the railings and things like that. Three, I think it'll make a good dinghy for the houseboat. So in the 10 years we had this out on the water, never had a way to get back to land. Since it's only gonna be six feet long, it might fit good on the back swim deck here, because this is gonna be, I think, 12 feet wide. Another option we were thinking, if we had a little davit crane up here on the front of the houseboat and we could uh, pull a tender up and keep it on the front of the houseboat out of the way and then it might be a whole video in itself of getting the thing legal because in texas you've got to take a homemade boat to a game warden have them inspect it so we'd have to get the lights on it you know fire extinguisher things like that so that should be interesting Quick specs on this boat, it's six feet long, it's aluminum sheet, it's 5052 aluminum, and it's made by a company up in Canada, which is a country north of here that gave us Justin Bieber and maple syrup. Jetstream Adventure Boats. This is not a sponsored video, but they plastered their name on the side of all these panels. The sponsor for this video is my credit card, because that's what I pulled out to buy this thing. Also, later today, I'm gonna reveal the engine that we're thinking about putting in this little boat. I've got it under a cover here, so we can do a grand reveal later. So I finally got myself an aluminum spool gun for the MIG welder. It's got NASCAR performance, so whatever that means. <laughs> you guys are gonna get to watch me learn how to MIG weld aluminum since I've never done it before. Yeah, buddy, spool gun. First time using a spool gun, so I've gotta figure out how to hook it up first. It's got a switch here. Switch it to the spool gun. So we're looking for eighth inch aluminum. We're gonna weld with 40, 43 wire. So we're looking at 375 inches per minute feed, 20 volts. We're at a 1,000 PSI. That'll get us going for a little while at least. And they recommended around 25 to 30 cubic feet per minute when it's running. Spool gun aluminum. 240 volt. We're running 4043 035 wire. Eighth inch, I found some eighth inch aluminum scrap. So we'll try a simple, simple butt weld here. All right guys, you are about to witness the first time ever pulling the trigger on a spool gun to try and weld aluminum. All right, here we go. Whoa. Whoa, that looks like shit. I just burnt a hole straight through it. Okay, cool. My angle's wrong. Whoa, that looks like ass. So there I'll go, first time ever spool gun welding aluminum before. Looks like crap, but it's pretty strong. You can step on this thing and bend the crap out of it. And it's not going anywhere. I'm just gonna practice a little more and then we'll see if we can zap this whole boat together and uh, have it hold in one piece. Then you can't find the water. Then you can't find your feet. Then it's I'm gonna try to start with just some wood clamps and see if that works. <laughs> Use uh, another clamp to clamp the clamp. Like clamp inception here. welds holding together for now. 
We're gonna do a little pre-bending on the side here. Let's see if I can get that to fit better. Since it's just me out here today, I don't know what I'm doing here. Don't know what I'm doing. Don't know what I'm doing. But we're gonna weld it together anyway. Just kind of go down the side, tack a little at a time, maybe. All right, we're getting there. Some of these welds look okay. Some look pretty terrible. By the way, y'all figure out what engine we're putting in the thing yet? Y'all got any guesses? Keep them coming. I am an idiot. I've got two bottles over here. So on this one, here's the regulator, zero to 4,000 PSI. And that's the black numbers here, easy to read. On the flow, it's the only numbers here and it's cubic feet per hour. So that's normal, easy to read. And here's the regulator on the bottle I've been using. So it's still got PSI on this side. Over here though, the big numbers, ends up these are liters per minute and the cubic feet per minute are the red numbers here. So when I've been trying to get 30 to 35 cubic feet per minute and I've been adjusting this thing way up here on the black numbers, I've really been shooting out 65 cubic feet per minute. The old metric system conversion got me. Fix this gauge once and for all here, Sharpie. This is what I get for buying the cheapest regulator off Slam is a, yeah, comes right off. And what we'll do here, goodbye to the black numbers. Freaking metric system, man, liters per minute. Right, guys so now that we didn't let the metric system defeat us i'm gonna clock back in finish welding this thing up it's starting to take shape though and i'm getting excited i think because it's such a tiny boat you know if it was a normal sized boat in here i don't think it'd be as fun you know but the fun factor goes way up if you take something normal and make it way bigger or way smaller like a truck you know it's kind of meh but if you made it a monster truck that's fun and if you made it a teeny tiny truck that's fun so All right, this thing is finally done, welded together. It looks okay. I hit it with the sander, so the aluminum's got that dull look to it. I got Michaela coming out here real quick to see if two people can fit side by side in this thing, because all the other videos I've seen of the micro jet boat, only one person fits it. Two people really? fit, barely. Yeah, but if we get in a wreck or something, I'll break my legs. <laughs> if we get in a wreck. Okay, last thing, engine reveal time. Now, the Grind Hard Plumbing Company boys in their little six foot micro jet boat, they put like a hundred horsepower jet ski engine in it. Cletus and those guys, they've got the bigger jet boats. They took sea Doo engines, so they're like 275, 300 horsepower. Did y'all guess what we've got? You ready for the grand reveal? Uh, okay, before you start yelling at me, I know these are little bitty outboard engines and the definition of a jet boat is a boat with a jet pump in it. These are not jet pumps. But the deal is I've got to find an old jet ski as a donor to get the engine jet pump out of it to put in this thing. And I can't find any right now on Craigslist for under $2,000. We found the Pink Punisher sea Doo last year for 400 bucks. But you gotta kinda wait for winter time when people are cleaning out their garages. In the meantime, while I'm still looking for a jet ski donor, we're gonna just have some fun with these little 
little cheapo Amazon outboards. I've got two of them to try out. This one is a four stroke. It's water cooled. It's got a metal propeller. This one is a two stroke. It's air cooled. It's got a plastic propeller. So they're both kind of different. So for now, the engine compartment is gonna stay empty until we find a donor jet ski to rip the engine out of. I think the one I wanna try first is the four stroke, even though I usually like two strokes better. You could drive it like this, and this one, the throttle, stays where you put it. So you can set the throttle, spin this guy around, you got reverse, flip her back around to go forward. <laughs> uh. with how this ended up. So it took a while to get the settings for the welder dialed in, getting the gas flow rates going. But once I did, some of these welds ended up looking half decent. So don't be afraid to pull the welder out. Try welding aluminum. It's not too terrible. Take you a little practice. All right, so the next thing is to go do some sea trials. That'll be the next video. But you guys let me know what you think. Is this gonna make a good dinghy for the houseboat? Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see y'all in the next one.